So I'm going to start in the middle of the play and give you a little bit of background info. By this point in the play and in my mother's life, um, I'm 12 years old. She was diagnosed with schizophrenia about seven years before and has been in and out of many hospitals. And Dad felt that at the age of 12, I was finally old enough to join him on his, on his weekly or bi-weekly visits to see her at Crownsville State Hospital, which was just outside of Baltimore in Maryland. Um, so my mom's name is Annie. My dad's name is Walt. I'm a big Orioles fan. Um, you'll notice that my mama has, uh, has the shakes, the twitches. Uh, it's not schizophrenia. I'll have a little bit more to say about that later. And I think that that's all you need to know. So we just arrived at the hospital, at Crownsville State Hospital. I follow my father down a dingy hall. A sign above us reads, Sea Ward, East Wing. We press a buzzer and wait. A nurse chewing bubblegum unlocks the door. You here for Ann? I remember you from last time. Your name's Walt Mack, ain't it? Ann! And you got your little boy there with you. Wasn't he a cutie? Ann! Want the two of y'all just come on in. Make yourselves at home. And you got visitors! The room is huge and chilly. A TV booms on one wall, the screen covered with plexiglass. Dozens of people fill the room, some muttering to themselves, some shuffling from foot to foot. A guy in the corner is crouched in pajamas, counting his fingers. I see Mama on a yellow plastic sofa, coffee stains on her blouse. I haven't seen her in months. She's smaller than I remember. When I take her hand, it's like, like touching a bird. My goal. You came. I didn't think you'd come. Everyone in the room is watching us. We follow her to a table away from the TV. Dad drags three folding chairs. What'd you bring me, Walter? What you got in that bag? My father pulls out donuts, a Whitman sampler. A carton of cool 100s. She unwraps the pack, but picks up the foil like she's half asleep. My father offers her a light. She puffs and puffs. Her cheeks cave in. Smoke wishes from her mouth. Her nails are painted with magic marker. You get my instant coffee? Not the decaf, I hope. The good kind. I hold it up. Maxwell House, Mama, just like you said. My father takes it from me. He pours the coffee crystals into a paper bag, hands her the bag, and keeps the jar. He sees me watching and says, son, we can't leave it. It's glass. Can't leave glass in a place like this. At a water fountain, she fills a styrofoam cup, stirs in coffee with her finger. See that girl sitting over there? That's Doris. She eats it with a spoon straight from the bag. At the sound of her name, the woman comes over and sits by me. She hooks her bare feet behind the chair legs and stares at me, her face soft and blank as a marshmallow. I stare back till I'm dizzy. Doris, I'd like you to meet my son. The woman wears a sleeveless blouse. From wrist to elbow, her arms are crossed with scars. X's. She sees me looking and scratches them. Now other patients shuffle over, faces hanging. One grinds his teeth so loud I hear him click. They hold out their hands to Mama. She gives each one a cigarette, sometimes two or three, a pack. She fills every hand without looking up. Her carton is half empty when a nurse stops by and shoes the other patients away. And you give everything away again, you won't have none for yourself. Why don't you leave your cigarettes at the nurse's station with us? Nurse, I'd like you to meet my son, Michael. Oh, isn't he a handsome boy? Looks just like you. Aren't you lucky to have such a good-looking boy? To me, the nurse sounds fake, like a dumb TV commercial. 
I don't like her fake voice. Her big butt. I'm glad after she goes away. Mom, I made you a storybook. I drew it the day before. The front page shows me holding a ladder against a brick wall. Mama climbing out a window. Next page shows us hand in hand. We're walking down a zigzaggy road. The last page shows us crouched over a campfire. We got hot dogs on sticks. You made a book just for me? Oh, Michael. What's it say? It's a storybook, Mama. That's you and me on the cover, see? It says, Escape to Freedom. My father leans over. Son, she's not here against her will. This isn't a prison. But what about the locks, Dad? What about the bars outside? Michael. Michael, this is a very pretty book. I will put it in a special place. Mama puts the book down, lights another cigarette off the butt of the first, her eyes crossed on the simmering tip. Walter, there's something wrong with my eyes again. I need glasses. And we've been through that. How many pairs of glasses have I bought for you? I get you a pair of glasses, you give them away. It's the wrong prescription, Walter. It's that doctor's fault. Mama watches me through a menthol cloud, her eyes pale and amazing, pupils sharp as pencil points. She searches my face, leans over so close, I smell her smoky breath. What is it, Mama? And I feel something I've never felt before, nervous next to her, her twitchy face, the way she chews her tongue, I back away. Mama, what is it? Forgive me, Michael. Please forgive me. I do. I can't think what else to say. Mama, I do. I pat her hand the way Dad used to. She cries, smoke slipping through her fingers like shoestrings. My father folds his hands. I squirm in my chair and watch her cigarette ash. It falls with a soft explosion. She sniffles, then points at my father's shirt. Walter, that's new. Where'd you get that shirt? Um, Sears, I think. Yeah, Sears and Roebuck. Is that stay pressed fabric? I guess so. They had a sale. I got two or three of them, all the same color. That's nice. That looks very good on you. Thanks, but I can't tell the difference. To me, it's just a shirt. Just a long sleeve shirt. Oh. I see. Well, you've got two or three of them. Can I have that one? <laughs> My father pauses. And starts to unbutton it. And she grins. Her cheeks flushed, her face suddenly glamorous in the way I remember. Her eyes bright as moths. He grins too, pulling out his shirt tails. They look at each other like secrets are flashing between them. Never mind. I don't need your shirt. I've got Frank Sinatra's. <laughs> she starts humming a tune, rock side to side in her chair. Dad says, I remember that song, Annie. That's Stranger in Paradise. Wasn't that your favorite once? She stands and sways before us, dips into a two-step, her plaid skirt splashing around her knees. Mama, you're pretty when you dance. My father nods. Stranger in Paradise. Seems to me that was, um, that was 1951. But wasn't that Tony Bennett? Frank Sinatra, Frank Sinatra, Frank Sinatra, Frank Sinatra. Could one of you take the knife out of my bag? I look at my father. His face just snapped shut. It's a joke. <laughs> it's a joke. You both look so serious. And you know it's getting late. Uh, 
We better go if we're going to beat the traffic. A joke, for heaven's sake. We put her things in the grocery bag, walked back the way we came. Dad on one side, Mama scuffing on the other. A joke, Walter. It was just a joke. The nurses in their booth are reading magazines. We rap on the glass till they look up. One of us a ring of keys. My father presses money into my mother's palm, but she doesn't look at him. Her face is dull and far away. The two of them stand stiff as dolls. Mama, I grab her hand and tug it. Mama, I feel so happy all of a sudden, because I'm leaving, I guess. Or because I came. Or because no kid I know has seen a place like this. Mama, when are you coming home? When will you be better? Bye-bye, Michael. Don't forget me now. Don't forget your mother. Her hand slips from mine. It wriggles from mine like a mouse. She shuffles away with her paper bag, her back bent over. She looks a million years old. My father and I are rushing out the door. I turn to wave, but Mama's already gone. All I hear is the whisper of her slippers. Shush, 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 shush.